five Dennis Rodman stories that won't actually shock you because it is Dennis Rodman we're talking about. Now as we all know, Dennis Rodman is one of, if not the craziest NBA player, let alone person living on this earth. No one can deny his talent on the court, but off the court we all know Dennis was wild. He was doing something a little bit different and a little bit out of the ordinary. He did win three NBA titles with the Bulls while playing alongside MJ and Pippen from 1995 through 1998, and two previously before that with the Pistons. Like I said, no one can deny his sheer hard work on the court, but many are aware of his antics off it. That's why I'm here to talk about the Dennis Rodman stories, on and off the court, with five Dennis Rodman stories that will shock you in some way or another, some better than others, but nevertheless, here they are. Number 1. The Wedding Dress In the 1990s, Rodman was at the peak of his career, but at the same time, this is when he left the bad boys and became a bad boy himself. Pause. In 1993, Rodman had joined the Spurs, and whilst it was a good fit on paper, it was horrible in reality, clashing with the team star David Robinson, who was not all that impressed with Rodman's lack of commitment to the team. Nevertheless, Roman would still average around 17 rebounds per game, which is actually insane in his stint with the San Antonio Spurs. Even though his play was incredible on the court, it was once again his antics off the court that led him to Chicago, and ultimately led to one of the greatest autobiographies in the NBA world, Bad As I Want to Be, released in 1996. As you can imagine, it became a bestseller. And obviously everyone wanted to read the book because unlike the biographies of most athletes and NBA players, Roman's, as you can imagine, was a little bit different and closer to the style of a biography of a rock star, which is why during the tour, Rodman bragged about how he was soon to be marrying a beautiful and intelligent woman. Shortly thereafter, he showed up to the bookstore in a horse-drawn carriage wearing the wedding dress and declaring he was about to marry himself. One of the most memorable images of Dennis Rodman during this time. And of course, Dennis Rodman would not have had a normal book release, because Rodman was anything but normal. Strange looks were nothing new for Dennis, but this was probably the strangest of them all, and it left a lot of questions on the table. Considering he said that he was bisexual at the time, and he had decided that he was going to marry himself, but later came out and said that he wasn't bisexual whilst having pink nail polish on his fingernails during the interview. So, as you can imagine, it's just the wild antics of Dennis Rodman that we're talking about here. But probably the real reason for his wedding dress was the fact that it was later revealed that Rodman received $10 million from the designer of the dress to wear it. So yeah, that's probably why he would wear the dress. I mean, $10 million to wear a dress? Since... If you asked me to wear a dress for $10 million, I'd probably do it too. <laughs> Except this was nothing new for Dennis and just something to add to his resume of crazy antics. Number 2. Free Tacos I like the sound of this one. This is my favourite story and it actually happened in a game which is why I love it even more. Back in 1998, there was a great promotion going on and of course Dennis Roman had to be part of it. He was going to participate in it even if it wasn't even him in the game. Luckily for the NBA, and luckily for Dennis, it was. It was a regular season game, but at this particular game against the Bucks, there was an ongoing promotion that if the team scored over 110 points, the entire arena would get free tacos. Something that still happens today to some extent with certain teams. Of course, Roman being a man of the people, and the kind of guy that really wanted to do anything in his power to make sure that the fans could get something to eat, it was already his time to shine. And it was in the garbage time as well. The game was already over, but there was still work to do for Dennis. He kept throwing up three-pointer after three-pointer, and some of them actually went in. Keep in mind that Dennis never really scored the ball, let alone hit any threes. And some are adamant that Dennis never even tried to score the ball. And I'm talking about two-pointers and points in the paint, but this is Dennis Rodman shooting threes. In 1998, Rodman averaged less than five points a game and shot 0.3 three-pointers a game. But when it came to free tacos for the fans, this is Dennis 
Time to shine. He went to work. He shot three after three. And as you can imagine, the crowd went crazy. When the team broke the barrier of 110, and that meant 25,000 Tuckers were going to be distributed no matter what, normally it might make another team angry if the winning team kept trying to score and blow them out in the last couple of minutes of the game. But when it came to Dennis Rodman and also free tacos, no one seemed to care and everyone seemed to be all right with it. So shout out to Dennis Rodman for that story. Number three when he brought a shotgun to a Pistons practice. In February 1993, Dennis Rodman showed up to a Pistons practice facility at the Palace of Auburn Hills with a shotgun. In his autobiography, The Worm said, I killed the Dennis Rodman that had to conform to what everybody wanted him to be. And as we all know, this was officially the time where he transformed himself. The kid that, well, seemed to be an ordinary, average bloke playing basketball, no tats, no earrings, piercings, whatever, turned into this crazy man with tats, piercings, crazy outfits, insane party. Like, this is the Dennis Rodman that ultimately everybody remembers him for. But before he was the crazy Dennis Rodman, he was the worm, the hustler, the rebounder, the Detroit Pistons power forward. And the whole story stemmed because... Well, he found out that teammates were sleeping with his wife, which left him mentally fragile, led him to the meltdown, led him to the shotgun being brought to the Pistons practice, and of course, the rumours were never confirmed about players sleeping with his wife, but Roman was crazy after the situation, which led to a lot of rumours and speculation, and that's the story that has seemed to come out of it. And eventually, Rodman was shipped out of town eight months later. So, there are some truths to what happened. We don't know if the teammate sleeping with his wife is a fact, but that's what has tend to be believed many, many years later. And it's the change that led Dennis Rodman to the Dennis Rodman we see on TV today. Number four. Dennis Rodman contemplating suicide. Now, this is definitely one that I'm not going to get into too much because I know Michael Zemba did make a whole video on it. And obviously, there is no story about contemplating suicide, but there is a story about the incredible man Craig Sager saving Dennis Rodman's life. So, shout out to first of all Craig Sager, rest in peace once again. But if you don't know about this moment, I advise you go watch Michael Zemmer's video or any video really about the whole contemplating suicide moment for Dennis Rodman. But I'll dive into a little bit of it. Obviously, Dennis Rodman, once he transformed himself, life was not always the best. He didn't really get along socially with a lot of people. He had friends and family and just random people. Because Dennis honestly was just a nice guy at heart. So he ended up losing a lot of money just by friends asking for it, people asking for it, partying obviously, and ultimately drove Dennis Rodman into a very dark time. And according to Rodman, on a cold night in 1993, he was sleeping in the cab of his pickup truck and he had a rifle on the lap his entire time. He said it was a vacant lot and no one was around, just him in his truck with his gun. Rodman said he was very, very close to killing himself on that night and that it was a great wake up call for him. And then the whole Craig Sager event happened and it ended up saving his life, which is really crazy. One Dennis Rodman story that is not the nicest, but it is one of those stories that really, well, led him to becoming a changed man in the end. Number five, his headbutting. We all know this story, even if you don't know the story, you've definitely seen it before. And it's not necessarily the story that made this one insane. I just love the fact that Dennis Rodman is one that just doesn't give a damn. Like, we see players headbutt each other, Kevin Garnett with Dwight Howard, it just happens. Recently, we did see another player, Sean Livingston, headbutt a referee, but before then, Dennis Rodman was one of the first. In fact, I'm pretty sure he was the first player to actually headbutt a referee. Rodman was not just crazy off the court, he was very weird and wacky on the court as well. But no one really had this much anger towards a referee like Rodman did on this night. And you really didn't want to be around him, especially when he was in this kind of mood. Especially when you're a referee about to give Dennis something he didn't want to get. 
and he was just having one of his bad games in which he was really causing some havoc and the referee decided that it was time to eject Dennis. Obviously as you can imagine, he didn't like it. He didn't like it one bit. So we started arguing with the ref and ended up headbutting him in the process as well. That wasn't the end of it. He then ripped off his jersey, pushed over some Gatorade bins as he exited the court. Since then, Livingston I think is the only other player that has headbutted a referee, but it actually looked like the ref wanted more to do with Livingston than Livingston had to do with the ref, which is pretty funny. Now obviously there are plenty and plenty of Dennis Rodman stories, but I didn't want to dive into the ones you've already heard. So these were just five. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like if you want more videos just like this. Subscribe, that would mean the world to me on the road to 250 thousand subscribers let me know what videos you want to see next i am planning a what if if you guys have any what if scenarios that you want me to make let me know down below i'll catch you guys in my next video i'm out peace